the account of the creation go to the very beginning of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came marking the first day. Let us pray. Eternal God, mighty and mysterious, sovereign over all, it is beyond the power of human words to express your glory, for you are greater than we can ever imagine. 
We praise you for that truth, yet we must also confess. It can be hard to live with. For it can make you seem remote, distant, detached from our situation, oblivious to our needs. We thank you that such times are rare, but they do come. Times when you seem so mysterious, so far removed from our situation, that we question whether you are there at all. Times when we seek yet do not seem to find. We ask but do not seem to receive. We cry out for help, but you do not seem to hear us. Merciful God, forgive us for finding it so difficult to trust in and rely on you, for so easily forgetting that you lived among us and truly know us, for forgetting all that you've done for us, for failing to take action when we should for seeing problems instead of opportunities, for being filled with doubt rather than faith, despite the fact that you repeatedly provide evidence of your love and forgiveness. Gracious God, give us the wisdom and humility we need to recognise our failures and mistakes, to acknowledge them openly, to seek forgiveness, and wherever possible, make amends. Help us to hold firmly to you in strength that you alone can give us, and to know that though we may be tempted to give up on you, you will never give up on us. Loving God, touch our lives with your healing forgiveness, our souls with your light, so that we may see you everywhere around us. In your goodness, guide our steps. Give us strength when we falter and put a new heart and a right spirit in us so that we may truly love you and faithfully serve you to the glory of your name. Amen. And now we will say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Spirit That Hovers The music of Malcolm Arnold creates an atmosphere of drifting, formless mistiness and swirling, almost menacing waters through which the bell tolls. Then out of the darkness rises a spear of light. In the beginning, God stirs the formless into recognisable realms, creation starts to take shape. We have scientific explanations of how the world and all in it have evolved. But none of that knowledge diminishes our recognition of the creative drive, the force that lies behind such evolution. The Israelites were reminded that there is but one true God, one amazing power and glory, the God, who from the beginning had a plan for the world, for them and for us. The work of the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, is seen right from the beginning when God's breath blew over the chaos and brought order. Various translations express it slightly differently. A wind from God swept over the waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. God's Spirit brooded like a bird. 
above the watery abyss. I understand that no single adjective could adequately describe how the spirit is. I can visualize the force of the wind, the roaring hurricane, and sense the lightest touch of breath, the breath of life. I can see the purifying flame and the peaceful dove. I see a bird brooding, not as menacing as a bird of prey, but riding the thermals, hovering, ever present, waiting and watchful, ready in an instant to answer any cry for help. In Old Testament accounts, the Holy Spirit empowered specific people for specific tasks or particular roles. But in the New Testament, God's Spirit is put, given to all who put their faith in Christ. His Spirit is with us, sometimes apparent in the spectacular sometimes in the unspectacular. Christians are made bold, have courage to face opposition, to speak out against injustice, while others work quietly in the background, helping the needy, making life run smoothly for all, patient and persistent. The Holy Spirit guides us in ways often unseen, through reasoned discussion, inner promptings, and for some through visions, hovering, not as a threat, but watchful, caring, leading us to follow the way, to be changed to become more Christ-like, children of God. Mark's Gospel opens by reminding us that the prophet Isaiah had foretold that a messenger would be sent ahead of the Messiah. 
We read from verse 4. The messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and preached that people should be baptised to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. All of Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and hear John. When they confessed their sins, he baptised them in the Jordan River. His clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, he ate locusts and wild honey. John announced, Someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I am not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. One day, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and John baptised him in the River Jordan. As Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart, and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, You are my dearly loved Son, and you bring me great joy. May God bless these readings from his holy word. Amen. The Spirit of Change In the preparation during Advent, getting ready for Christmas, ready for the company that was coming, we heard words from the prophet Isaiah. Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord's coming. And now we hear those words again. This is the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had declared. This messenger was John the baptizer. He was calling people to prepare themselves. They should confess their sins, turn to God for forgiveness and be baptized. John was urging them to be changed, to be ready for the coming Messiah. Those who repented, who were washed clean in baptism, were ready to receive the message that Jesus would bring. Jesus, the one promised of God. The people flocked to hear John. All of Judea and Jerusalem went to see this man from the wilderness, a man who had removed himself from the trappings and corruption of their society. He reminded them of the prophet Elijah. He reminded them of their past and pointed to the future when the Messiah would come to reign. After 400 years without a prophet, They wanted to see and hear him. Many responded to his call for repentance and John baptised them in the River Jordan. He explained that while he baptised with water, the Messiah would baptise with the Holy Spirit and fire. He told the people how great would be the promised one so amazing that he felt completely unworthy, unfit, even for the duties of a slave before the one who was coming. Jesus came from Galilee and joined the throng waiting to be baptised. When John looked into his eyes, he knew that Jesus was the promised one, and he knew that Jesus had no need for a baptism of repentance. In Matthew's Gospel, we learn of John's reluctance. Again, he feels unworthy. But Jesus reassures him that it should be done. 
that it would fulfil all that God required. As he came up out of the water, Jesus saw the heavens split apart and the Holy Spirit, like a dove, descended on him. For him, it was the sign that after 30 years, his life was to be changed. His ministry was to begin. He heard the words, you are my dearly loved son. A powerful reminder of his unique relationship with God. He heard <clears throat> the words of approval and encouragement for the task ahead, a task empowered by the Holy Spirit, forceful, yet gentle as a dove, gentle, yet strong as love. The same Spirit that moved at the beginning of God's plan, that moved over the waters at creation, is active again in this next beginning. The Spirit, with Jesus, will bring in a new creation, a new life, into which we are all invited. We were helped last week to think of new beginnings, of New Year's resolutions, the start of a new year, a new phase in fighting the corona pandemic. A new way of looking at ourselves and our society. There are certainly things that could be changed. How could any of us have known how last year would turn out? Life is full of surprises, and even in the quiet of lockdown, the unexpected happens. Today was one of those days. The front doorbell rang. I moved draft excluders and unlocked the inner door and then the outer, and there was the postie. Cradled carefully in his hands was a red squirrel. I know you love animals. Can you help, please? I've tried to warm him in my cab, but I don't know what else to do, and I'm rushed off my feet. What could we do? I called my son and went to get a box and some wood shavings. When I got back, my son was holding the squirrel, and the postie was leaving his number so we could let him know what happened. The little body was cold. Oh, so cold, and only the open eyes and trembling let us know he was alive. We phoned the SSPCA, but our nearest agent was stuck on an icy hill in Dundee. The squirrel, held close to body warmth, was beginning to stir. One back leg wasn't moving, and we noticed that one side of the face looked a bit squashed and the body fur was flattened. Had a dog held it in his mouth? Had it fallen or been hit? Why was it lying in the road, freezing to death? Our vet was open, so I lined the box with a piece of fleece and tied the lid with string. My son set off with his precious parcel. <clears throat> Sadly, there is no happy outcome to this story, but I'm taking from it a reminder that life is fragile and the unexpected happens. Covid has changed all of our lives, but in the darkest of times, God's Holy Spirit is there for us. We are called to a new relationship with God. Jesus Christ is the link between heaven and earth and we are called to a new beginning, a new life through him. 
the creative spirit of God at work at the very start of the Genesis account of creation is at work again through Jesus. Jesus restored people to the wholeness of life that God intended for them. For all who believe in Jesus, there is a new creation as the Holy Spirit works in their hearts to make them also children of God. That life is offered to us. A new beginning through the forgiveness of God, not only offered at our baptism, but through all the everyday opportunities that happen in our lives. The Holy Spirit at work changes us, prompts us, inspires and empowers. May we stop being afraid and welcome change, knowing always the love of God in our hearts. Amen. Spirit of God, and sing us the word, gentle as is the dove. Teach us the truth that help us believe, show us the Saviour's love. You spoke to me, and long ago, gave us the reason still, needing its truth, through it God's voice is heard. Spirit of God, unseen as the word, gentle as is the dove. Teach us the truth that help us believe, show us the Saviour's Without your help, we fail our Lord. We cannot live this way. We need your power, we need your strength. Follow in Christ each day. Spirit of God, unseen as the word, gentle as is the dark. The truth that tells us believe, show us the Saviour's love. And we will now offer to God our prayers of intercession, our prayers for the world. Let us pray. Jesus, King of glory, risen to reign at the Father's side amid the clash and clamour of daily life. We enter into the haven of your presence to pray for the world, hurting and disordered, broken and in conflict, ill-divided and sorrowing, greedy and grief-stricken. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, beloved Son of the Father, shine with the radiance of your eternal light into the lives of those who live in darkness or in shadow, those who find no rest in sleep and who dread the coming of the morning, those whose earthly lives are drawing to a close those who grieve the loss of loved ones, and we think especially of the Clarkson family at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Jesus, shepherd of our souls, gather into your embrace those who are wandering or lost, those who've been driven from their homeland for fear of their lives, those who camp in makeshift homes, and those who have no roof over their heads at all, those who have lost their way and strayed into wrongdoing or private hell, those who cannot move forward and see no way back. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, true physician, bring comfort and healing to those whose lives are distorted by disease or pain. Those whose minds are scarred by illness or injury. Those whose spirits are downcast by shame or guilt or remorse. Jesus, friend of the poor, bring dignity and relief to those whose daily struggle with poverty demeans and exhausts them. Those for whom hunger is a daily companion, whose children cry out to be fed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, most patient, look kindly upon us, your church. Where there is confusion, grant guidance. Where there is division, grant understanding. Where there is blindness, grant vision. Where there is weakness, grant strength. Where there is doubt, grant faith. So that living in your glorious light, we may uphold and proclaim the transforming power of your gospel today and every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. And now the blessing. God of glory and grace, unfetter our hearts that we may respond to your love. Spirit of challenge and choice, open our minds that we may put our trust in you. 
Lord of compassion, pour on us your healing balm, that we may be filled with your peace. And may the deep love of God, the joyful fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the fragrant peace of Christ be with us and all those we love, now and forevermore. Amen.